Hello everyone, and there's some waving going on. And <laughs> welcome to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 3, The Asset, uh, as seen on TV podcast. So, uh, I'm, my name's Dom, and with me I have my co-hosts, Mike. I'm yes, Mike. And I'm Cleo. Cleo. Miss Cleo. Miss Cleo. How are you guys today? Well. Good. Tired. Very. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Continue being tired. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys think of this week's episode? Better than uh, the other two? I would say a vast improvement. But I mean, maybe not a vast improvement, but the episodes are definitely getting better as it goes along. Yeah, and no, I was talking to you guys uh, in pre-show, and... I'm still loving the series, but the one thing that's getting under my skin is the fact that they have to mention that Agent Coulson <coughs> died every single episode. It seems like they're going out of their way to bring it to our attention again, and it's just it's starting to get under my skin, so I hope they stop that soon. I, hope uh, I don't think so. Not until we find out why they're saying it. Oh. I feel like they're going to keep mentioning it. Until it's we find out happening. what really happened to yeah. Agent Coulson. It's just... It's like, I can understand doing that if you are... Trying, you're, you're assuming your fans are a little intelligent here, and it's kind of dumbing the show down for me. That's how that's how it's coming across to me because I, I want to show where I, I guess I'm I'm used to a couple other shows like Supernatural stuff where they expect you remember thing from week to week, and that does not seem to be the case for Agents of Shield. It seems like every episode can actually be a one-off uh, thing, even though they, there's they're trying to set some continuity between everything. Just seems like they're they're trying to make it extremely standalone. I don't know if I like that format. Hmm. What do you guys think That's of that? I don't know. I feel like they keep uh, mentioning it, mentioning it uh, to torture the fans because I I'm on Tumblr, and everyone's like, "Why? Just tell me why!" You know. So I feel like they're doing it on purpose to be like, "We're not gonna tell you yet." Deal with it. <laughs> the, the dangling yeah, they're just dangling it. Just they, they, I think they know their fan base and they just want to torture us a little bit. That's so nice of them. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I really can totally consider. see that. So, we mentioned uh, the last two weeks that they kind of need some overarching villain to be added yeah. to uh, the series, and it seems like they did a really good job setting that up, uh, which is kind of the big reveal at the end of the episode. What do you guys think of that? We'll start at the end. Alright, I, um, I'm wondering the whole episode because I know this is coming, and I'm sitting there wondering, alright, so there's gravity generators going, this whole thing's happening, how are they gonna, you know, get, the, you know, Dr. Hall into this machine to fuse him with the graviton particle, you know, the gravity particles to make him, you know, the supervillain graviton. So, and then, you know, they're standing, you know, gravity shifted, they're standing on this piece of glass that's dividing the room, and as soon as Coulson shoots it out, I'm like, that's how they did it. And then he falls, like, ah, oh, it falls in, he's the catalyst to stop the reaction, the gravitonium seals him up, and that's it. It's just a shifting blob of black liquid goo. Summaries! Mm-hmm. And then just, you know, the end, I, I knew they were going to show something at the end, and... <laughs> You know, the hand is pretty much what I was expecting. Yeah. Just all of a sudden, you know, there's the blob, and it's just a uh, hand reaching out and then back. Yeah. And that's all. Yeah. So, so that's nice. I, I hope, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I hope that that sort of blows up in Coulson's team's face because they, they sort of buried that. There's no paperwork for it, and it's going to be in, like, the Vault of S.H.I.E.L.D., and there's going to be the supervillain that just comes out of it. And, and nobody know. else knows that that's there. It's true, because they, they took the, the filing off, so anybody could just yeah. wander in there. Yeah. So, yeah, because Colson said, just bury it, and, you know, Director Fury's going to be like, all right, it's not gonna be good. where the fuck did this guy come from? I really want Fury to come back every few episodes and just rip Colson a new asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I know when the movies and stuff, not even necessarily Avengers movies, but, like, let's take another Marvel character, Spider-Man, for example. They they went back and they kind of changed the whole Green Goblin thing, and, like, a, they changed a lot of it. So now we have, in S.H.I.E.L.D. here, Agent Coulson, who didn't exist in the comic books, is now the creator of 
Graviton? Like, how do you guys feel about that? Oh, um... Doesn't really they change. Me. They change lore all the time in, you know, comic book originated things. It's... No, no surprise that they did that. Yeah, it, it doesn't really bug me. I mean... His original origin, if I remember, was he, there was an accident performing an experiment manipulating gravity. I believe that was it. It's been a really long time. But, um, yeah, some kind of experimental accident infused, hit the molecules of his body with gravitons. I'm guessing that that is pretty much what happened, just a different way it happened. Instead of an accident, he was basically fell into it yeah. as a result of... Mr. Col oh, Agent Coulson. Call him Mr. Phil. Mr. Phil. I can understand why they do it for the TVs and movies and stuff. I'm just not a fan of having to retcon anything in general. And I, <laughs> I like when they try to avoid it all, all means possible, but sometimes it slips through. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, uh, you, can't, you can't avoid it yeah. in no. anything. Even in, like, comic books, because things change, years go by, you have to change the lore. It's just, it just comes with the territory. Yeah. So, last week we were talking about whether or not Sky was going to betray S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, and we kind of uh, saw she was already struggling with the, the fact that she wanted to stay with her hacker group or, or stay with S.H.I.E.L.D. And then they throw you right at it where it seems like she turned on them in a heartbeat in this episode. So, what do you think of the double twist where all of a sudden she came back? I don't think she came back. I think that was her plan to get in his office with the compact and get get them on their Wi-Fi so that I I don't think she was betraying him. I just think that was Well, to her the plan. fans, it seemed like yeah. that seemed like the oh, moment yeah. we were we were expecting her to betray Shield. And then yeah. she does, but it's revealed that she's not actually betraying them. So, yeah. what do you think of the double twist is is more what I mean. Oh, okay. I liked it. Yeah, that's good. It was effective. I mean, if she used her rising tide, like, alias, contacts, backdoor channels, whatever, to even get an invite to this guy's party in the first place. So, I mean, I don't know. I think she's playing both sides at this point. I are, Okay, I think she is playing both sides. It's just not revealed to us yet. So... When she writes, you know, she just keeps talking so then she writes down, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. is listening. I'm like, completely unsurprised. Like, oh, you bitch. And then it's like, oh, you pulled a double. Yeah. <laughs> I no, know. I think that was her moment. And she chose S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, because mm -hmm. that was that whole, the whole theme of that episode is that, um, what's his name? The Ward. agent who's training her. Agent Ward. Yeah, Ward. Ward was like, y you're going to have that moment. Where you completely commit. She, I think that was it. Yeah, it was kind of funny that uh, this week Ward kind of taught her something, and last week she was the one teaching Ward. So you could tell they're definitely learning from each other, and more yeah. than I think Ward actually realized he was going to learn anything from her. Yeah. And uh, she's she's kind of proving herself to be a very capable agent. I just love the part like. Ward tells her, you know, stealing the gun's one thing, you know, having the guts to pull the trigger is the other. And then later in the episode, she steals the gun from the guy holding it on her. It's like, he's like, you know, you know, kids got balls. It, yeah, ew. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah, but do you have, you know, do you have what it takes to pull the trigger? Nope. nope. Just runs out the window, you know, out the back. Yeah. She jumped right out of that window into a yeah, pool. Yeah, just jumps out the window like, nope, gone. So, so there Mike... What, what did you think about her uh, slow motion Baywatch jog? Oh God! <laughs> was it in slow motion? No, it wasn't in slow motion. Okay, it was I was gonna say. Motion. I might have remembered. I don't know. All of a sudden, it's like she's wearing her. I if I have to answer this, how the hell did they stay in her dress? Is the only thing. Like I, I, if it was in slow motion, I would have been like, where, where the fuck? Is We're Hasselhoff? checking out right now. Yeah, I've been like, where's Hasselhoff? Is he right. hiding in the pool somewhere? <laughs> Thank you. I have to talk about boobs now on, on this podcast. So, yeah. next episode, Sky's Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> so, we also saw Melinda May. She decided to rejoin combat. What do you think changed her mind? Um, she missed it. I think she misses it, definitely. Um, probably, 
the fact that they are going into a lot of high risk situations where she would probably be able to help them get out of that uh, goes back to a previous me- episode where she mentioned that they already have two non combat trained agents on the ship mm-hmm. on the the plane and they invited on a third so I'm going to go with she misses it and maybe she feels she'll be better suited in the field than just sitting there flying the plane and not really doing anything but you know communicating yeah. or facilitating communications yeah and she words. she knows what um Nina she knows what of other people in shield know that we don't whatever happened to Coulson right so she she knows that and there's something with him not being as skilled as he was or something like he, he wasn't able to use the gun properly or some, something yeah, he, he couldn't so she, strip the gun as, yeah you know quickly as he used to yes yeah, so she knows whatever's going on and she she would rather be out there instead of him yeah it's she, possible she feels that whatever happened to him might be revealed to him if he keeps going in the yeah. field maybe he is an android oh my god if he's the vision i'll lose it i will lose it Oh my god. Me and my dad were talking about that when um, I finally stopped fangirling about the ending of Avengers. And we were talking about it. It was like, Colton can't be dead. He's got to come back. What if he's the Vision? And we just we were spitballing. Holy and that was one of the things that came shit. out. Was that that, if he I is the Vision, think of that. I'll lose it. <laughs> you broke. You, God, I, that didn't even cross my yeah. mind at all. Yeah. That would be a cool way of working, you know, with just talking about them changing the lore and twisting things. That would have been, that's, I would. Which which will make me extra happy that Scarlet Witch is in it. So yeah, because Scarlet Witch is coming in. For those of the, uh, uh, sorry, And they kiss! For, for those of our viewers who, who don't follow the comics or, or anything like that, what exactly is the vision? My dear. Well, not 100% sure because I, it's been, it's been a while, but he's like an android. He's like, like a robot. Um, and he can do Which, psychic this, things. Um, and he was a psychic. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't even remember this. It took me forever to remember Ultron <laughs> oh. when I heard he was in the Avengers. The only reason I knew Ultron was because it's in the cartoon. Hmm? They, oh, yeah. they, re- they used Ultron in the cartoon. They do use Ultron. I, I knew him from the comics too, but. Oh, like God. Yeah, I, all I remember about the Vision is he had psychic powers. And he was and, the um, robot android thing. Yeah, who built him? Oh, I had. Oh, God. I don't even remember. But That's the Vision awesome. is awesome. Yes. Awesome robot. <laughs> he kicks ass. <laughs> and he, in the comics, him and Scarlet Witch had a thing. Like, they were dating or married or something. I don't a know. thing. They had a thing. So, if Coulson is the Vision, he gonna get a bitty. <laughs> so, uh, what, what about um, the, the other twist this episode that Dr. Franklin Hall was actually the guy that turned himself in? set himself up to be uh, the the mole, so to speak. Yeah. I Well, he explained it pretty well that he found out that, I can't even remember the guy's name, the guy who kidnapped him. Mm-hmm. Kidnapped him. In the first place, he found out that he found a large mass of gravitonium and realized, all right, this guy's going to do what we talked about many years ago and do these experiments. That's too dangerous. Gotta and stop it. I gotta stop it, and the only way I'm gonna be able to stop it is to go there myself. Gotta and blow everything up. Shield's not gonna let me do that. So yeah. I know this guy. Let me, you know. Yeah, so I like it. It worked. Yeah. Yeah, it worked. Uh, the but guy was. It wasn't. Head. It completely. It completely threw Coulson for a loop because he comes in. He's like, "We're rescuing you." It's like, "I know. I'm. I'm where I'm supposed to be." It's like, good. "I did not expect you to say that. My plan did not involve you saying that." Yeah, the guy was uh, Ian Quinn, by the way. Uh, Ian Quinn, that was the name. Thank you. Because they made a, a invisible pun. <laughs> Dude, uh, did, you, did you catch the pun? That, that I was, did catch the pun, yes. That was my favorite part of the episode. I love really bad puns, just for the record. I don't remember that. Break me. <laughs> Brain offline, rebooting. <laughs> that, that reminds me of a, uh, a pun that that you, Mike, just had a recent run-in with a wine glass. Yes, uh, the wife 
saw a wine glass in Bed Bath and Beyond that was way overpriced for any you know anything to drink out of that isn't made out of like the tears of unicorns, <laughs> but the solidified tears of unicorns. I correct myself, but it was a glass that it was a wine glass that the glass was held by like an owl or something like that, and it said on it, "Owl drink to that." Yar har hardy har, but I wasn't paying twenty bucks for a wine glass. Owl drink to that. Owl drink to that. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it I loved beautiful. it. I, you should have bought it. It was totally worth twenty dollars. Oh God, I'm going back there with a coupon and buying two of them. We need wine glasses. We don't have any. We have everything else. Ish. So now that we've completely mementoed this episode, what were you thinking at the very beginning of the episode <laughs> when um? The cars just start getting picked off and getting thrown off the road and landing in trees. What, what was your first thoughts on this? Alien abduction. That's what I thought it was, because they, they were being lifted up like it was a tractor beam or something. Yeah, thinking um, theoretically from the, from their theories from the previous episode, how we looked and it was Dr. Hall and that was Graviton, my first thought was, wait a second, he's already Graviton? Because, you know, that, that's my thought. That's, it that's what I was thinking as well. Because we I'm were like, trying to figure out last week whether or not he was going to come into the episode as Graviton or if he was going to be an origin story. And, uh, right. And that's what yeah. I was thinking. I'm like, oh, he already is Graviton, and that's what's going on here. But why are they trying to, if he's a supervillain, why are they trying to say, maybe they don't know he's a supervillain. My brain was just going, the gears were grinding. And, but, yeah, then it's like, turns out it was a mini experiment and all that stuff. And, I was I was somewhat disappointed. I'm like, oh, they're cool. My fun theories. Aww. <laughs> All right, I'll keep watching. So <laughs> I like the look when they find the truck and the SUV in the tree, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, up there. <laughs> Just, I wonder. I wonder. So next week's episode is called "I Spy." E Y E. Another great pun, huh? Oh, yeah. I spy. Um, and it says that uh, Agent Coulson and his team are, are going to track down a mysterious woman who has singly, single-handedly committed numerous high-stake heists. But when the woman's identity is revealed, a troubling secret stands to ruin Coulson. Who or what do you think this secret in person is? Secret might be something to do with his death. So or soon? His resurrection. We're just Maybe. talking about the carrot on a stick. We're dangling it in front of everybody. We, we don't want. We don't want to. Well, give I mean, they have been dangling it for three episodes. Maybe that's all they intend to dangle it for. It's possible. And who is she? And it's called I Spy with an I. Hmm. With the word I. I don't the know. Preview for next episode, didn't they say like she was a shield agent or some form of shield agent or something? I can't remember. I didn't get one. I didn't show a preview of the next oh. episode for me, so I unfortunately didn't see one. Oh, I forget because my mind is mush. 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 Mashed potatoes. Yes. Mush potatoes. Mush potatoes. Mush potatoes. And Kirby. So what do you guys I want to see next week? If, yeah. If, yeah, I do want to see next week. No, now. what do you want to see next week? A what? Oh. Um, if she was a sh I would love for her to be some mm, character from the Marvel Universe that has to do with eyeballs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm curious. I would like to see... I'd like to see the carrots stop dangling in our face. I want to know some... Uh, even the slightest smidgen of a detail about what happened to Coulson. Is he an android? Is he a... Uh, I'm guessing that's what a life model decoy is. Is he an alien now? Is he the Vision? Is he... I don't know. A wrecking ball. <laughs> is he a wrecking ball? Sorry. Tahiti's a magical place, is he? Apparently. A magical yeah, place with wrecking balls everywhere. Didn't... <laughs> Didn't, um... There's just clones of Agent Coulson riding them naked like Miley Cyrus. <laughs> both, both women in this room are completely <laughs> broken. This is 
a very vivid picture I just said. <laughs> that how vivid? She said very. <laughs> oh god, now you gave her the vivid. Oh, this is completely going off the rails here. We broke it. This is body voice. Any opinions? <laughs> Capricorns. All right. Capricorn. That's what he said. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Personally, what I would like to see, I would like to see either Fit or Simmons. I want one of them dead. No. Not so soon. Not so soon. Not, that not, is maybe not so soon, do. but but I want to see it this season. That is a very Whedon thing to do, yeah. Um, Someone's dead. Because my my whole thing on them is but no, you see, they're pretty much the same character. That's it's why like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Right. It's a running joke. That's why everybody refers to them as Fitzsimmons. They're get, it, in the next couple episodes, they need to have some character development, I think. A little bit, Otherwise, yeah. they're going to get very They need old. to get separated or something. They need some individual yes. character development. There's there's too yeah. much. It's Like I said, it's the Tweedledee, Tweedledum thing going on. You cannot really... To be quite honest, I don't know which one is Fitz and which one is Simmons. I just... I don't. like. And that's the joke Ward made. No, that's the joke Sky made. She's like... You know, they don't like each other. I'm pretty sure that he doesn't know which one is Fitz and which one is Simmons. Yeah. I don't either. I really don't. You know, I think... Fitz is the guy. Yeah, so I was just going to say that. But... That wouldn't be Whedon's style, because you would have to immediately connect, or like really deeply connect with that character, and I don't connect with either Fitz or Simmons yet. Yeah, not yet. So, he, w he would kill off someone you really loved. Wash. <laughs> I yes. Mean, I have Agent said. Coulson. I have a sad Agent, yeah, Agent Coulson. Coulson. But he's back there, so maybe they won't kill off Coulson. They they need him for the movies. Yeah. Coulson is pretty much he's guaranteed. Yeah. They need him for fan service. Yeah. Yeah. Fan service. <laughs> Nick Fury. Maybe they'll kill him off. No. I don't think so. Although Ward they could. Or May. Some of my favorite, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. storylines is when Fury goes off the grid for whatever reason, and Nina's got to take over, and she's, like, bitch in charge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I could see them killing off Melinda May at some point. Yeah, because... Yeah, maybe. She seems like a character you have a little bit of... You're starting to get a little bit of sympathy for, because you know she does not want to be in the field, and if something tragic happens to her into the field, then you're going to... It's gonna get pushed onto Coulson's shoulders. It's gonna be like he's gonna be the blame for, like everybody else knows she does not want to be in the field. So this was a private conversation that her and, her and Coulson had together. So from other people's perspective, it's gonna look like he forced her into the field. Yeah. And because you can relate so well with Coulson, that that's gonna weigh on him and, and directly impact. So I could totally see them doing that. Yeah. Definitely. I forgot. I honestly forgot what it was in the episode, but she says something or she does something, and I go, "I think I'm in love with her." <laughs> she's so badass. She is. Uh, any other final thoughts on the episode or the series in general? Cars getting tossed, um, guy getting kidnapped. I. I, I love the show, and I'm gonna keep watching. And I love the characters. But we were watching, like, because I watched with my whole household, and um, we were saying, oh, hey, look, it's, it's, it's Firefly. They're on a ship. It's the right amount of crew. Freaking Sky is even following a sort of Jane path. Oh, God. It, it's, it's, it's Firefly. And you weren't on the But it's the kind of like it doesn't live up to Firefly. Like, it's not as good as Firefly. You weren't on the show last week, but uh, Mike had actually mentioned there was a direct... Firefly reference. I think I did. What? Yeah. What when is... Ward took out that staff and jammed it into the ground, and that thing popped up and created the blue shockwave at the yeah. beginning of Serenity, Simon uh, did the exact same thing. Okay. Yeah. So there are definitely some parallels. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and and yeah. I would have no. I would have. I have. Would have absolutely no problem with that. I would think that would be awesome. But the show doesn't live up to Firefly. That's my yeah. only problem. Yet. The show's got some time. And no, I know. They, I know. They have Disney's infinite budget, and this show is definitely going to go into a second season. I see no way of that not happening. 
It's already yeah, yeah. a huge success. So, they got time. Oh, yeah. They got plenty of time. And I love it. I do. I think it's great. All right. Just so, my sense. I got nothing to say. So, uh, that does it for this week. Um, you guys can catch us next week. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube, www.youtube.com slash ASOTV podcast. Uh, Mike, where, where can the people follow you? Follow me on Twitter at Thilladrin, T H I L L A D R E N. I spelled that right. Good. Excuse me. And uh, Cleo, uh, you got a YouTube and social media? Follow me on lots of things. Social media, I'm always Cleo Moto. C L I O M O T O. And your YouTube? Oh, YouTube's yes, right. It's youtube.com slash L I O S M F V I D S. Very, very easy to remember. Rolls right off the tongue. Totally. I'm getting a change. That stands for Leo's I'm fucking vids. Yes, it does. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm getting it changed. So until next week, see you guys later. Bye.